Now, our next speaker is Venerable Guruma Bodhi Sankhya Gita. Now, regarding Guruma, she lives in Canada and she teaches mostly the different aspects of applied Buddhism. And she is a scientist as well. And she often visits Nepal and she provides many kinds of help to Santi Kunj and Bodhi Institute, where we have several monks who are engaged in teaching and research on Theravada Buddhism. So now I request Honorable Guruma to make her presentation. And the title of her presentation is also on Applied Buddhism. And the title is Applying Buddhist Values for Social Change. Honorable Guruma. Vandana, respected bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, good afternoon, esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I have a, a short PowerPoint slide presentation that will accompany my talk, but that comes a little bit later so I can begin while they uh, set up the PowerPoint presentation. So I'd like to talk to you today about um, applying some Buddhist values for social change and some work that's being done here in Lumbini. First, I'll mention um, some Buddhist values that are conducive to positive social change. <clears throat> the Buddha had spoken on many occasions and in many circumstances about the importance of and the methods for moving towards a peaceful society. He gave instructions on how monarchs should govern. He taught how individuals should treat one another in our various relationships with one another, such as parental child, employee, employer, uh, friends to each other, etc. But more than just detailed instructions on how people should behave, moreover, he explained the value and benefit to the individual in doing so. And most importantly, he gave practical methods to develop the qualities needed as well as eradicate those defilements impeding success. So this is not a paper just to espouse all of the Buddhist teachings, but rather to highlight some of the important values that he taught that would help bring about individual and social change that's really needed to meet some of the demanding issues of our time. So I'll discuss the implementation of some of these values in the local community of Lumbini with some results. Um, I'll present, uh, if not so gently, um, I'll subtly nudge us towards moving forward and taking action within our own spheres of influence as well. The Buddhist teachings place value on contentment with the basics of life, self-sacrifice, simplicity, restraint, renunciation for our sense pleasure in the now in favor of the development of our self of the future. While at the same time, training us in the removal of those defilements impeding our success, success such as greed, hatred, and ignorance. Another set of Buddhist values that we must follow for personal enlightenment or to follow the Bodhisattva path are the paramis, or the Buddhist perfections. I mention these practical steps we can all work on that help us set us up for and support our spiritual life, and many of which have governed the work that we have undertaken in Lumbini. So as many of you are aware of or have heard of before, the 10 paramis are dana, generous action, sila, virtue, nekama, renunciation, Panya, wisdom, vidya, effort, kanti, patience, satcha, truthfulness, aditana, strong determination, metta, loving kindness, and dupekka, equanimity. The relevance of these teachings for today. 
the Western economic, mod Western economic model that the majority of the world is following without question is one of economic efficiency, mass production and distribution, globalization, development of high technologies, and what it's doing is fueling individualism and consumerism. It is believed that by this model, the economic benefits will naturally flow out to all humans and citizens and that large impersonal bureaucracies will fix our social problems. Ignoring the fact that this is completely an unrealistic model for our planet Earth to sustain, this model has actually led to unchecked capitalism and wealth growth for a very small percentage of humans and at the expense and exploitation of the other 99% of humans and all other species on our planet. We're past the point of crisis and waiting for governments to fix the problems, we need to take immediate action at local levels. The DAMA, as I have merely touched on, and which many of my esteemed colleagues today and tomorrow will have illustrated with much more knowledge and authority, provides us with clear guidance that transcends time and place. Some examples from Lumbini. Um, so education is really the beginning. As an environmental scientist, I always used to say that without our environment, nothing else matters because life wouldn't be sustained. But reflecting more deeply, I now see that we need education to understand problems and to be able to think through how to fix them rather than to have a victim mentality or to bear resentment. We also need to retain a percentage of the educated population locally to continue the work that's needed locally and not just leave to a so-called better place for money alone. Local job creation will flow in the form of educators, healthcare providers, environmental protection and conservation work, animal welfare, education, and educated and morally invested politicians. Something that surprised me the first time I came to Limbini 12 years ago was a stark contrast of the wealth of many of the pilgrims and religious institutions in Limbini master plan area compared with some of the poverty that lay just beyond the compound's walls. I soon met a young Buddhist scholar who had just finished school and Buddhist studies and who I learned was using every scant resource available to try and educate his peers and communities from basic education to environmental conservation and for the need of dhamma and meditation in daily life. He immediately struck a chord with me and I soon made it my personal goal to try and support this special being in all of his charitable and spiritual endeavors. We spent a year planning the future course while immersed in pilgrimage, intensive retreats, service and dhamma discussions. What little we came by, we used in this work, and we shared the vision with like-minded individuals along the way. Later, being ordained as a nun, I expanded my circle of concern from just my immediate family and friends to now a global family from all over the world working together for Lumbini. Today, though, there is a lot, uh, still a long way to go. I'd like to take a few moments to share with you some of the projects we're supporting as part of Venerable Matea's insightful vision for strengthening Lumbini for the local community. The work I must mention is grassroots led and managed, and this is very key. The early pioneers, peers, and devotees of Venerable Matea are commonly referred to as Meta Family, but the organization is officially registered in Nepal as Lumbini Social Service Foundation. The tireless volunteers campaigned every household over the years to enroll their children into school programs with a special focus on the benefits of educating girls. In addition to secular education, we are teaching Buddhist val values and formal training at our Peace Grove Nunnery and at our Bodhi Institute to our Rishini nuns and our Samaneras. And we teach the life of the Buddha, mindfulness of breath meditation, and the five precepts at our girls, uh, Karuna Girls School and the Meta Schools with the opportunity for them to take extra extracurricular periati classes. The schools are donation based, however, encourage families to make a small investment in their education. But, it is, but nobody's turned away for lack of funds. All religious traditions, castes and class of the region are welcome and do participate cohesively and harmoniously. And now a brief slideshow. Um, 
Next slide. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay. So what we see first is the um, flagship of all of the projects in Nepal, the Meta Schools. There's two branches of them today, um, with approximately 700 students at the branch class here in Mahilwar, and 400 students in the branch in Punihawa. And the classes go from grade um, pre-kindergarten, nursery to grade nine. And this began under a tree around 2002 under Venerable Matea and the many volunteers who we see around today. Next slide. And these are just some more pictures of some children and the schools today. Next slide. Next, we'll see what we call the heart and hub of our Meta family here in Lumbini. It's our Peace Grove Nunnery. Um, it serves as the community center for all of our projects. Um, it's uh, currently housing 25 Rossini nuns receiving secular and monastic education. Um, we have support for educating them further beyond their high school, and we have seen the success of uh, four nurse midwives um, now succeeded in their diplomas and working in their community. Uh, one nun has received her master's in Buddhism, and we have several studying in, the in their bachelors of education, humanities, and Buddhism. And one of our nuns is studying in Sri Lanka. Next slide. And just a, a quick picture of our Peace Grove Nunnery here in Lumbini. Next slide. Right next door to our Peace Grove Nunnery is now the Karuna Girls School. This has children from classes 6 through 12 and approximately 250 students enrolled. There's um, communities being served from a 12 kilometer radius around Lumbini. There's bicycles that are provided or bus if the commute is too far. And again, all religious traditions, classes and castes, castes of religion are represented. Um, we have special classes at the Karuna Girls School, uh, classes in journalism, music, periati, art, and sports. Um, we also uh, continue to see all of the students there grow and thrive, and our three recent graduates from the school are now teaching at our Meta schools. They're empowered, dynamic, and engaged. Next slide. In addition to the secular education at Karuna Girls School, we provide vocational training for those women of Lumbini community who didn't get the opportunity to study in a school but would still like to earn a vocation. So we have computers and tailoring classes. Next slide, thank you. Um, Canadian Engaged Buddhism Association, uh, the f organization I'm with in Canada, uh, helped to found this next project, Bodhi Institute. It's a monastery and peace education center. It's under construction, but it's now currently housing uh, 25 seminaries led by Venerable Matea and Bhante Sumangalo. It's located in the east monastic zone of the LDT master plan area. And we have the vision of it becoming a Buddhist conference center and a peace education center for youth. Um, Next slide, please. Just a couple of pictures of some of the seminaries and some of the construction that is completed at that project. Next slide, oh, this one's good. And we also have been working on providing environmental and conservation focus in all of our schools. And another project that Venerable Mate has been involved with and has much support is Lumbini Crane Sanctuary. He's working with the International Crane Foundation. This is an area of land that's protected around the Peace Pagoda um, in the master plan developed area. And it houses uh, the endangered Ceres crane species, as well as a number of other important wildlife that we need to protect. Next slide. And uh, in the lower picture, you can see some blue bull antelope. Next slide. And in addition to this, we provide meaningful travel opportunities for pilgrims and supporters from around the world to come and visit these projects, uh, have a cultural immersion, give the opportunity to volunteer. We host um, medical clinics, animal clinics, gives them an opportunity to deepen their practice and engagement, as well as visit the holy sites. 
So as I mentioned, uh, some of the success we've seen and some of the results are, are still early. We're still working hard to move forward. But um, the Meta family volunteers and pioneers, along with many of their family members now, are the administrators, abbots, abbesses, teachers. They serve on the boards of directors, continuing to give back to their community. Additionally, um, we have one uh, nun that's interested in becoming an environmental scientist, and we're working with a group in Canada to um, obtain uh, some solar installation and electrical technician training, and she'll be um, co-housed with two more nuns coming from Canada, uh, coming from Nepal to Canada to take nursing college there. About two more minutes. Thank you. Um, again, uh, we see our boys in the projects are also growing into bright and responsible citizens and some have been supported in furthering their education in engineering, architecture and business. So together, the children of Lumbini are rising to the oppor opportunities provided to them in every respect. They're empowered, dynamic and engaged to build a bright and sustainable future for themselves and their society. I believe this model for positive social change in the homeland of the Buddha is a model that can be used anywhere it's needed. There's still much to be done um, in engaging the local monastic communities and businesses to take up the banner for more equitable changes for local society, for improving infrastructure, decreasing environmental impacts, increased pressure for regulation and enforcement of the environmental laws of the region to improve the air and water quality for all the beings inhabiting the region. For our part, the next tangible projects we're working on for Lumbini is a nursing college, teaching hospital, and an animal sanctuary with a clinic. So we need to take a step beyond just understanding the Buddhist teachings. We need to uh, move beyond just intellectual knowledge that we've heard or that we've read. We need to take it into our hearts, understand it, meditate on it, put it into practice, see the results for ourselves, and make it knowledge for ourselves. These are known as the three types of discernment taught by the Buddha in the Digha Nikaya or Long Discourses. It's Suttamaya Panya, understanding that comes from listening, then taking it further to Chintamaya Panya, understanding that comes from thinking it through for yourself and turned into bhavana maya panya, understanding that comes from developing your meditation and practice and putting it into action. So by now we should recognize that it's imperative we work together for the common good and to make efforts to realize that helping others helps ourselves just as much, if not more, in the good karma that one accrues by creating and strengthening our community bonds, by distracting us from our personal troubles while we're carrying out the work. We need to share our personal experience and knowledge with others, help others where we can, lift each other up, give materially where it's needed, and share Dhamma where we find receptive recipients. So just in conclusion, the Buddhist law of interdependence lays bare that none of us are independent islands unto ourselves that can live without the support and influence of others in our communities, countries, and the global sphere. In the Sutta Nipata, the Buddha says, one is not an outcast by birth, nor is birth one a Brahmin. By action, one becomes an outcast. And by action, one becomes a Brahmin. Thank you, namaste, and may you have the triple blessings of the triple gem.